A Ray of Hope is a multimedia organization. We create content for film, television, and we do concerts, retreats, we do events. The idea is to draw people to the teachings of the church in a way that's relatable to them. Our team is very young and youthful and on fire with the faith and really loves to share the beauty of what it means to have a relationship with Christ. Being with them, you know, on a daily basis really inspires me. It's always been part of our mission here at Array of Hope to proclaim the message and the gospel in a way that people can best receive the message. Here at Array of Hope, I have many different responsibilities. I am part of the social media team and I create some of the content. I'm part of the music team um, as well as a presenter. Here we are in the Array of Hope studio. The talk is on the theological virtue of hope. It's great to be a part of this team because everyone brings different gifts and talents to, to the table. Let's take it from uh, the next section. Go ahead. At Array of Hope, I am the social media director and content coordinator. So I do a lot of stuff, mostly on social media. I am the social media assistant and office administrator. I help everyone. At Array of Hope, I am the production manager. I help produce the music. Music is such a vital and important way to share the faith. Um, it touches upon our senses in a way that sometimes is unexplainable. Faith is what we need. So in the Array of Hope band, I mainly play guitar. Sometimes I might track some other instruments for the recordings. I think music is such an amazing um, way to get your message across because especially it's just such a spiritual medium, the emotion that it, it, it brings forth in people. I also help with the podcast, Reason for Hope. Our Lady's Apparition in Fatima, I found it, it was, to me, it's one of my favorite apparitions of Our Lady because it's so prolific. I'm the director of theology at Array of Hope. I review all content to make sure it's theologically sound and consistent with the teaching of the church. And I also produce content for videos and podcasts, uh, but I also am trying to make sure that the teaching of the church comes across clearly and in a way that's very easily understood. My role at Array of Hope is to help the team develop content that is targeted and specific toward the audiences that they're looking to reach and evangelize too. And when COVID hit, it's sort of like the breaks went on, right? I mean, what does an event organization do uh, when they have no events? We had to figure out how to really reinvent ourselves. And over some time, we came up with this virtual platform. It's really a platform where families, young people, uh, people that want to host a retreat could come to and really share the faith, learn about the faith, uh, have fun and interact with one another and interact with our team. Hi guys. What's your name? I'm Nicole. Hello Nicole, nice to meet I'm you. A Ray of Hope took the initiative to retool itself, to actually deliver content in a compelling, dynamic way on demand and also live. Now on behalf of all of us at Array of Hope, I want to welcome all of you to our Rise Up Virtual Confirmation Retreat. The virtual events are really fun. They are truly live and it's, uh, it's great. I play some games with the uh, audience members and the participants. This game is about music and the Bible, okay? Scripture, so this is called Song or Scripture. The energy is there and people are excited. We wanted to simulate the excitement of what Array of Hope does in a live environment. Each event, we start off usually with welcoming everyone and sometimes we have a guest. Please help me in welcoming His Eminence, Cardinal Dolan. Hi everybody, Cardinal Timothy Dolan here. This platform is so cool, the way that you can engage with it. We do polls with the, with the kids. There's a chat bar where people can type in their thoughts. Interact, engage, do trivia games. As well as giving talks. My favorite part of the event is probably playing the games with the kids because they come on screen with us and it's, we're able to have this one-on-one -on -one interaction. It's so much fun. We are having an event with St. Edwards and St. Jude's. And right now I just announced an Instagram trivia game, which we do every event now, and they go in a prize. An array of hope, t-shirts. It's a two-way conversation, and it allows many people to be involved. Took the opportunity to have Array of Hope come in, and I'll tell you, it was fabulous. We had such great feedback. It really did 
appeal to everybody. The little kids um, loved the games, loved the uh, the live aspect of it, loved seeing their friends who got to be on the stage. We just recently were preparing and did a large event that almost had a thousand people attending it. Hey guys, our event is about to start, so let's go. Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to tonight's event. There's like 800 kids on here right now and they're like engaging by the second and commenting and stuff. So it's really cool and exciting. I'm trying to keep up over there on my computer. There's hundreds and hundreds of kids and families on this platform right now, all engaged with the team. Uh, we're playing music, we're sharing the faith, playing trivia games with them. It's just so much fun. This is our biggest event to date. So many people on this retreat right now. This is literally the craziest I've ever seen it. There's a feature of the platform called the virtual stage where it allows the participants to actually come in to the platform and join us for the event. So the participant can literally click on a button. They kind of fly into our virtual green room. They meet our producer. And then before you know it, they're on stage with the performers, the virtual stage, and interacting with us. I bring people into the virtual platform. So when people want to call into the virtual stage and interact live, I'm sort of the mediator there. Hi, Mom. How are you? you both of you guys can be on the stage, you know? so. You both be in the frame. So maybe just get a little closer together and we'll, we'll both play a game. I mean, to have a thousand people in one space sharing the faith and engaging is uh, not only powerful for us, but it's truly uh, a representation of the Holy Spirit at work. It's given us an opportunity to tap into people all over the country, sometimes all over the world, um, which there's this connectivity that we, we didn't have before. And some people respond differently than others. Some parts of the country respond differently than others, and we can make that adjustment. The retreat was very rich. Uh, it touched upon so many different aspects of our faith. The music was fantastic, of course. That's such a key uh, to reaching young people. What we're producing as far as a virtual experience is unlike any other experience that's being produced. Quality is so fantastic that it actually looks like we're in your living room. That's a very intimate experience for people. And if we can do that and give them more than what they asked for, we're gonna make great friends and we're gonna help each other in this journey of faith. I didn't know what to expect, you know, exactly from the retreat. And I'm sure that the kids probably came into it as um, just another virtual type classroom, what they had been experiencing in school and various events. But I think from the very first moment of logging on to the retreat, um, they were very impressed. We perfected something now that is beautiful and functions at a high level that we can use it as another a piece of our arsenal to share the importance and beauty of the Catholic Church. So uh, I think it's gonna be around a long time. It becomes yet another spoke in the wheel of the system to evangelize. That's the most important part about this platform. The question we were asking, is this something that uh, we should continue to do? Because it did meet such a great need during this particular time. And overwhelmingly, uh, the parish has requested that even when we go back to normal, whatever that's going to look like, they would like this option of being able to do this uh, virtually. Parishes need to plan. Schools need to plan. You know, they, they want to provide programming that, that's vibrant and that's meaningful. I think innately we all have this desire to seek and know God in times of crises and in good times. We're able to provide what, what is needed in the church and, and I'm super proud and excited to be able to do that especially during this time when we're virtual and we're apart, we can feel lonely and isolated. And to know that there's a community of people praying for you, for your specific intentions, and the things that you need prayers for the most is so, is so special. And I feel honored to be able to lead that and to ask people what they would like prayers for and to pray for them in a specific way. It's really special for me. We're here to awaken hearts. We're here to bring about in their lives a change so they themselves can inspire others and build discipleship. We're sharing the story of who Christ is in our culture 
through our own personal witness, and that's powerful. We're very blessed to be able to do the work of God and be instruments for God in this way for the church and the world. So this is the time that we really need to unite and push forward and to overcome these distractions and what we might think are limitations, because these limitations are the very things that will give us the strength that we need to persevere. Let's unite and truly become the universal church uh, and proclaim the gospel with joy, uh, vigor, and excitement because um, the message deserves it, right?